I hope everyone able to see my screen. Okay. Please yes. confirm. Okay, just yes. wait for two minutes. I don't want, want people to join in between and get disturbed. No. Just wait for two minutes. I'm starting. Let me repeat to all of you, whoever is not received the notes, okay, of the last two sessions, give me your email ID into the group, okay. Or you can WhatsApp me on my number 571-485-5578. You can or you can email me on my email ID. Or I think WhatsApp is open. Okay, I send it to everyone. 571-485-5578. Anyone not receive or join my group? Okay, everyone, just wait. And everyone, please join on time. Okay, this week, Saturday and Sunday, I'm waiting to all of you from the next week onwards when the session will start. I want everybody to be on time, right? Because it's not good for the people who are joining on time. They have to wait for you all. So that is not correct. So please be there, join on time. Just wait, everyone. Just wait, maybe next one more minute, and then I will start. One more minute, I will start. Thirty more seconds. Let's start. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to the topic. What the topic we are discussing? So, thank you so much for joining, everyone. Okay, today here. Let's go back. Today here we are discussing our the session of the session three, right? So let me repeat the first session. What we discuss in the first session? Are you able to listen to me properly? Anyone, please confirm if you want to listen to me properly. If you want to see my screen, yes. Hi, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Good. Sure. So in the first two sessions, what we discussed, we started with the concept: what exactly database is? What is database? What is tables? Why we are using different types of tables? We learned heap organize, index organize. With tables, we learn why we are using database. We learn the concept of DDL and DML. Each and every day, we are discussing the scenario-based questions with all the permutation and combination of topics, all the permutation of permutation and combination of questions that can be possibly asked on a particular topic we are discussing every day in the class, right? So we know the last session when we discussed about first time DDL and DMLs, right? How exist which type of scenario-based questions coming when the DDL fail, then what happened? When the DDL not fail, then what happened? How it is auto-commit going on? Everything we discuss in the session. When you move to the second session, we learn the concept of your uh, precise and uh, precision and scale. We learn the negative scales questions we learn about. We learn about the concept of invisible column, how exactly invisible column will be used and how, how it is used. We discuss about that concept. We discuss about the concept of set unused command because set unused is why this why these questions will be important because in interview they want to they want to basically test you that how exactly you are working in a scenario. Okay. Today again, we are, today's class is very important, right? We have discussed many scenarios, many scenario-based questions. First, we will discuss one concept left on the column. Let's discuss about the concept of virtual column, then after moving to the scenario-based question. So there is a concept of virtual column concept, right? And one more thing, as I told you, many people ask me, Vishal, I want to download database, right? You, you don't have to download any SQL Server or a Cal. You don't need it because, see, you are here to prepare to crack interviews, to go in a company, work on the databases. You don't hear from the installation. And wherever you go, in every company, you will get the installed database on your machine. So don't waste your energy there. Waste your energy of understanding the concept. You can go and directly use livesql.oracle.com. Livesql.oracle.com, you can just go here, create your uh, account, and you can directly use your database. As I told everyone in every session, 
right? We are providing notes. Suppose here, if I go, as I tell you, suppose my B24 batch is going on. My B24 batch, all the whatever we discuss, all notes is here. Just like last session, you will see we discuss about pipeline functions. We discuss about the concept of sysref cursors. Everything will be here into, into the notes. Whatever we discuss in the class every day, I'm giving the notes to everyone. I'm here to one to one help. If you need, you all can ping me anytime. So whatever the topic you are discussing, what the concept you are discussing, everything we are getting into the notes every day. Okay, this is what my way of teaching. I'm trying to help you exactly how we can do. Okay. Let's understand today the concept of virtual columns. What exactly virtual columns are and why they are used. Okay. Then we are going to the next scenario question. Virtual interviewer don't ask you the question, what is virtual column? No, they will not ask you a question, what is virtual column? They don't ask you like this. Interviewer ask you a question in the interview that my table has a four columns. Understand this question, how the interviewer is going to ask. Interviewer make a scenario based question that my table contains four columns, right? For example, let me show you one. Go here. Interviewer ask you, my table contains four columns, right? Column one, column two, column three, and column four. Column one, column two, column three, and column four. These are four columns in my database. Interviewer will tell you. And what is saying that what I want that the three data populated from the user, user will enter here. Suppose you enter two, you enter three, you enter four. I want automatically data populated onto the fourth column, nine. Anything I want to plus or I want to multiply or I have any formula like two underscore three underscore four or I have a formula two plus three divided by four, whatever. Any formula based data automatically populate into my fourth column. I don't have to do this. How can you do that? So virtual, there is a concept of virtual column. Virtual column comes into the picture, right? That if I want, virtual columns comes into the picture that if I want to, that is I am a SQL server project pre-computed column if what I want I want to populate this particular column based on the other three columns input that is the column called, called virtual column concept virtual column concept virtual column how it will work let's see a scenario one question we can see like uh, please mute who is not speaking please mute okay Rajesh okay so let's see this here. I'm creating a table in front of you, and then we can discuss about this. So I'm creating a table, create table text. Okay. I'm getting one column. Suppose ID underscore one. I'm saying this is number. ID underscore two. I'm saying you are number. ID underscore three. I'm saying you are number. These three columns. And fourth column, I want auto populated. Suppose I'm writing all underscore ID. I'm writing here generated always as id underscore one plus id underscore two plus id underscore three id underscore three plus two plus three id underscore three i'm just writing it here virtual when i write it in virtual so what is happening this table created automatically if this table created into the system this fourth column i don't have to define any data type it automatically populated with whatever the formula i wrote it here computed column calculated column or virtual column see here i'm writing here insert Excuse me, sir. yes sir i'm not able to see your video are everybody else able to see my video yes okay, yes then you have to get disconnect and reconnect again okay, okay maybe that's why there's some issue check on youtube okay. or you can go on youtube whatever so you can see this i'm writing here i'm supposed i'm inserting the data one comma two comma three i'm writing insert into test at three columns id underscore one comma id underscore two comma id underscore three values i am inserting this data into my database let's see what is happening abdul you have any question you raise your hands abdul you have any question you raise your hands no okay inserted the data into the table i am seeing one row inserted i go here select star from test see this table what is happening see the data what is happening here in this scenario 
my table i inserted data only id 1 id 2 id 3 1 2 3 the fourth column is automatically generated with this concept id 1 plus 2 plus 3 1 plus 2 plus 3 becomes 6 this concept is called virtual column concept interviewer never ask you the question interviewer never ask you the question like this into the interview that what is virtual column no they will ask you scenario that i have a table I have three columns. I want an extra column into the table and I don't want to insert data from my application. What I want, whatever the data user will insert, my fourth column or fifth column or I have a column that will be automatically populated based on few scenario, few calculations or few adjustment, whatever you can see. So many people can think that we can go and update the column. You don't have to update it. At the time of table creation, you can create a virtual column concept which generated always as virtual when you make it this column will be automatically comes and populate the data second question is here this is at the time of table creation can i if the table is already created suppose some table is already into the system so can i add a new column that column will be virtual column yes you can do it as well let's see this i'm creating a table suppose i'm writing create table t1 right okay. i'm writing it Rajesh, I muted it once. You again unmute it again. Start speaking, man. Seriously, if you don't have time, then no need to join it, class. Create table column one number. I created this table. My table created the normal table. My question is, can I alter this table and add a new column? That column will be virtual column. Let's see this here. I'm writing an alter table T1, right? Add a new column, column two that will be number generated always as gen generated R T D generated always as suppose i'm writing column one plus one whatever right column one plus one suppose i wrote it see this here table altered i go this here i'm going to insert the data insert into t1 in the first column column one I'm inserting suppose the values VL UVS values. I'm inserting value three. Go here, select star from T1. You can see that a new column will be populated with the value four because I created column one plus one. You got the concept? You can add it here. You can add this here virtual column. A virtual column will be added here into this table with column auto populated so let me repeat what we discussed we discussed about we are discussing about a concept of virtual column that virtual the data will be populated depend upon your calculation if i want to populate the data into a column it's not coming from the user input but it will make some calculations and that automatically populated at the runtime we can use the concept of virtual column at the time of table creation also we can do or we can alter the table also we can add a column make it generated always as Generate always and make our formula. The formula will insert the data and create into the table. Got it? You till here understand? Yes, Sandeep, you have any question? You raise your hand, Sandeep. Yeah, while creating table, you said no need to uh, give. Uh, yes, if that, you don't that, do that, it, automatically it will it will work. Yeah. Yes. So no need if to give number, this, right? Yes, you wrote it number. The main concept is when you create the tables, we have to define the data type. Right? But if you don't want to define the data type, it also it will take automatically because the virtual columns comes with a calculation. So he knows that from which table you are doing what. Automatically, database will understand and get the data type of it. Got it? Uh, yes. Okay. And also, you didn't use uh, the keyword virtual here. Again, that is fine. I, yes, that is fine. If I, I read generated always. That is okay. That is okay to understand it in virtual column. Okay. And one more, just give me two minutes, Anupma, and I'm coming to this. This topic will finish in 30 seconds. Then I will come to Rasid and ask to ask a question. The one thing is here again, interviewer ask you that can I make virtual column is invisible? Like something is coming here, but I don't want to see it. I can see this column is added. Column two is added, generated always means virtual. I can make it invisible. See this here. I'm writing alter table T1. See this here. I'm writing alter table T1. Modify my column two as invisible i n v i s i v l e my column two become invisible select star from t1 now nobody can see that t1 come on 
only column one is displaying column two is not displaying that is the concept of virtual column rashid ask your question now rashid you can ask your question you raise your hands yeah thank you vishal actually my question is can i share, share your screen mm -hmm. see already i'm having one table existing table for that table uh, without adding any extra column how can i retrieve data like adding modification like multiplication like that so I repeat the question what you said i have a table okay i'm having a table mm -hmm. so here what you have done alt you have done alter table t1 add column 2 right mm -hmm. without altering a table is it possible to check data like adding multiplication without adding a table how to add the table without altering the table you cannot add the column you are okay. seeing when we learned about the first class the concept of ddl ddl means data definition language that comes with alter command if you want to add a column you have to do alter the table without altering the table you cannot add a call add a new column so you have to do this without this it is not possible okay yes karthik you have a question Okay, come back. Now, today I'm going to discuss a very important question to all of you. And remember this one thing what I'm telling you to all. When you go for interview, right? Why we are learning here? We are learning here so that we get a good job. Simple. There is no other thing. No other concept we are learning. We are learning so that we can get a good job. We can get a good salary. When you go for interview, right? Sometimes what I'm telling you a question to all of you. That question is so important. Right? Most of the time, interviewer is just asked the question randomly. Maybe he's thinking about some question and he just asks a question to all of you at the some moment of time. What he's expecting to all of you is that you the interview is all about the 50 minutes of game, right? And you have to drive your own interview. This is what you have to do in each interview. Is the interview wherever you are going? Is your work is that you have to drive the interview. There's a question is very common question in the interview. Almost every experience level getting this difference between delete and truncate this question looks very 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 easy very common and what i'm understanding it if you go for a database interview everybody knows about this answer but do you know that one thing when you are giving this answer delete and truncate see i'm not here to teach you difference between delete and truncate i'm here to teach you how to crack your interviews with your technical ability right why i'm giving this answer today right because this question is so common Every day you are using this question. Almost sometimes interviewer thinking about some question. So in the meantime, they just ask to delete, delete and truncate, and see how to answer this question. I am going to teach you how to answer. This is what my main motto of this whole. Do Aniket, you raise your hand, ask your question, so that I move forward. Aniket, you raise your hand. Do you have any question, Aniket? Yeah, yeah, I do have a question. So like you have created that column, uh, that alter. Uh, so I just uh, this invisible column will be storing in the table. I mean storing in the table or it will be only for that particular session no invisible column is stored into the table we alter okay. the table and create when and we alter the table it means it is a permanent you cannot roll back you again make it alter to make it visible so it is stored into the table it exists into the database okay okay yeah it takes okay. space into the memory it is there okay, okay. yes okay. yes what about virtual column will it be stored yes definitely everything is stored everything is stored why not you are creating something they must store other than views everything stored don't worry about it whenever we are creating altering you are doing something they are take space into the memory they store into the database yes abdul ask your question abdul you raise your hands okay. karthik you raise your hands yes you yeah, tell me so uh, if what if we have a table and data in it and uh, mm -hmm. we have 10 rows in it and after that we have altered the table and it created one column mm -hmm. will, be, will the existing row will be auto updated or uh, karthik have, have you joined my last class karthik yes yes in the last class i discussed this particular scenario that yeah. interviewer asked you that my table contains millions of rows and okay. then I'm adding a column. So adding okay. and dropping a column concept when I teach in the last session, I tell you that when you add a new column, the all previous data populated with null, 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 null values. Yes. If I don't want to populate null values, you are using default use, default this. So new column populated with the default values. We discuss about it, right? Okay, okay, sure. Okay, you can go through the notes and then ask me any question if you have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. 
and uh, one more gautam ask your question i can move forward then uh, gautam you question you raise your hands sir can i like directly enter value in the virtual column directly enter the value no you cannot that is the concept is generated always you have to come with the concept you cannot that's why we are make it that's why we make it virtual okay okay let's come back to the very the best scenario which i'm trying to teach you today okay that is question is very popular almost if you go for 20 interviews all 20 interviewer asked with this question right difference between delete and truncate this question is important for all the people here today in the class for one year experience to 20 year experience everybody i am going to teach you what are the difference between delete and truncate if you go here and turn to the google and write it here difference between delete and truncate right you can get plenty of websites giving and all give you correct answer but we are not learning this we are learning different right let's see how first see what is delete truncate in next one minute then we can go for the main concept delete is a dml command truncate is a ddl command they all everybody knows delete is a dml truncate truncate is a ddl command delete can be rollback rollback means reverted back because delete is a concept of delete is a concept of delete is a concept of dml dml means insert update delete and every dml command will be followed by tcl tcl means commit and roll back so if you are writing any delete and truncate we can do commit or we have to roll back but in case of truncate it is auto commit that we all know everybody know about it that truncate will can be auto commit data i discussed in the first lecture truncate is a ddl ddl is auto commit delete we can delete a particular data from a delete statement but when talking about truncate truncate will truncate the whole table this thing written everywhere these examples written everywhere i am not here to teach you these examples i am here to teach you that's why you join me right how to answer this question interviewers sometimes ask this question randomly i will give this answer to everyone into even into the notes even you can see this here the people who are not supposed for example i create a table create table testing testing i insert a data id number right i insert here insert into testing values suppose i'm inserting one two select star from testing i can see the data one and two i want to delete some record i can make a where condition delete from testing where id is equal to two i can partially delete the data but truncate is there is no where condition one row deleted i can see into the table only two the one is removed here i can make a rollback data come back rollback complete select a star from testing what is happening delete everything where is the data gone i delete anything select insert into testing two insert into testing one select a star from testing delete from testing where id is equal to two one row deleted select a star from testing oh you know what is rollback everybody can answer this why my table doesn't give me any record when i make it roll back my table does not give me any record can anybody explain me why who can explain me why let's see here i inserted also i delete also i make it roll back everything will be rolled back right insert also roll back that's why let's make it first insert there one no DDL. insert ID. two then i write a commit first first let me save the data commit means data save into the system then i'm writing select a star from set, set test i can see two records now i'm deleting a record from here and i make it roll back deleting the record i can my table contains only one record i, I make it roll back roll back complete then i do select star from testing my table both record will come back so these are the easy thing and a small thing everybody knows about test everybody knows about the concept of uh, delete and truncate delete and truncate delete is dml truncate is ddl delete can be roll back or commit truncate cannot be roll back and commit we can use where condition into delete we cannot use where condition to truncate these are the small things everybody knows about it i am not going to teach you but when you give this answer to the interviewer right 
you can give one, two, three, four, five differences. I will send into the notes, don't worry. But the problem is your sixth difference is and seventh difference is your sixth difference is truncate is faster than delete. Truncate is faster than delete. And seventh is truncate will reset HWM and delete will not. Truncate will reset HWM and delete will not. You know what happened here? Understand this question. Interviewer ask a general question to you, difference between delete and truncate. 99.9% .9 public give correct answer. But see how to answer. Your answer will be first five differences same. Six difference, truncate is faster than delete. And seven, truncate will reset the HWM, but delete will not. As soon as you say the word truncate will reset the HWM, into your next question, you know what? What is HWM? You know what is happening here? You actually set the narrative. You actually remove the interview. You actually move the interview. You set the interview that you told the interviewer to ask me this question. Are you getting my point? You actually force the interviewer to ask me what is HWM because you told him that what, what you told him, you told him a truncate will reset HWM and delete will not. Understand the trick. How to, this is what I'm teaching you. I'm not teaching you difference in delete and truncate. That is written here. On all this Google website, it is written difference in delete and truncate. And all these are correct. All these are correct. It is written here. I'm not giving this answer. I'm giving you answer. When the interviewer asks a question, you have to tell delete will uh, truncate will reset HWM. As soon as you said the word HWM, interviewer asks you what is HWM. And here you have to give this answer. You have to kill the five minutes of the interviewer and you actually make a good command over the interviewer, he will give a good impression that you know the concepts of database. What is HWM? HWM means high watermark. HWM means high watermark. What is high watermark? High watermark is the last block till where the data is written into the table. High watermark is the last block till where data is written into the table. What is this? I'm giving a very, very uh, interesting question as well in, in next few minutes. Let's see here. First, understand SWM. Suppose this is my table. My table are data stored into the data blocks like this. These are the blocks data is stored here. When you start the table, your HWM is here. This is your HWM. High water mark. Suppose 500 rows inserted into the table. 500 rows inserted. So your high water mark shifted to here. Why? Because these all blocks are filled with data, right? After that next command, you are inserting 200 more rows inserted here. Your high watermark shifted here because these are also filled with the data. After that, you are adding 700 more records. Your high watermark shifted to here, right? Because these are all filled with data. Then after you deleted, suppose 300 records. 300 record deleted, but high watermark is still here. High watermark will not move back. What is high watermark means? When I'm running this query, select star from the table, my table, my database will go and search in the each block. Do I have the data here, 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 here? Each and every block, I'm going and try to search the data into the table. And it will take a lot of time. It will take a lot of time. For example, let's see this here. See, one more easy example. Suppose this example. This is my house. Consider this is my house. Okay. This is 10 bedroom house. One, two, three, four, five, suppose six. I have mentioned I have eight bedroom house, for example, nine bedroom house. Okay. Suppose somebody came here. Okay. And he that wants to he go and switch my call well. And I want to find out Vishal. Where is Vishal? The door is open. The chances of seeing Vishal is Vishal can be find here, here, can be 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 anywhere. Right? Agree everyone? Agree everyone? Vishal can be find any every everywhere because my this is my whole house. My house contains nine bedrooms. So Vishal can be find everywhere. Understand everyone? No confusion at all. Right? So it will take a lot of time to you to come and search where is Vishal. But suppose there is a bulldozer came. 
okay yogi baba bulldozer came and he took all my house all this my rooms are he just destroyed my all the rooms okay then you just come here you have a boundary then if you just stand here you can easily see vishal is standing in this corner or this corner or here or here or here searching for vishal is very easy if i don't have data because they just had a boundary you can see from here where is vishal are you getting my point everyone if i have different rooms it will take you time to go and search vishal exists in which table which uh, which particular room this room that room this room that room all the nine rooms you are searching for me but because if there is no rooms just a boundary it is easy for you to search for me that is the concept of high water mark high water mark is the last block till where data is written take an example an interview question very good interview question that i have a table see interviewer how interviewer asking a question interviewer saying i have a table my table contains 1 million rows 1 million rows means in in uh, you understand 10 lakhs rows into the table and I'm running a select query and my query taking 30 seconds to retrieve me data. I'm running a query and my query took 30 seconds to retrieve the data from a table. I, the table contains duplicate data. I go and deleted 90% of the record. I deleted 90% of the record. Means it's become 0.1 million or you can say 1 lakh record. But still my query took the same 30 second Y. Let me repeat the question. 99.9% .9 public start giving answer performance tuning. 99.9% .9 public start giving, sir, there is no index. I will check index. I will do explain plan. I will do this. I will do that. I will don't know what. And I don't know why they are giving answers. Listen to the question one more time. This question is nothing related to the performance tuning. This question is related to the concept of delete and truncate this is what i'm teaching you i'm not teaching you difference between delete and truncate for different delete and truncate you can go what do you think you can go into right here top 50 interview questions database what do you think that that these pdfs will make your selection zero percent chance if you find anybody in this whole world who got selected from learning top 50 interview question who survive in the job please let me know interviewer are not a stup stupid i'm telling you who is taking your interview that person will know within 30 seconds when we start speaking you know they know within 30 seconds that you actually knew this or you coming from google just understanding the top 50 interview questions they are not a stupid person they are very intelligent they know that within 30 seconds so don't make them fool you try to prove yourself smart that is your responsibility delete and truncate you are giving see the question let me come back to the question first the question is my table contains 1 million rows if anybody don't understand the question please let me know my table contains 1 million rows means 10 lakh rows when i'm running a query my query took 30 seconds to retrieve the data interviewer say i deleted 90 percent of the record i deleted i deleted 90 percent of the record now my table contains only 1 lakh but still my query took the same 30 seconds why Everybody understand the question? Anybody a doubt in understanding the question before I move forward with the answer? Okay. Because the concept of delete and truncate. You take somebody raise the hands, is it? Okay. So because the concept of delete and truncate, your table contains 1 million record here. Once your table contains 1 million of the record, your HWM is here, for example, here. You deleted record. Deleted means maybe data deleted from here and here. Only these three blocks contains data. Rest all deleted. But still, when I run the query, my query go and search here, 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 till the last block where data is written, where my HWM. Every table contains, every table block contains a thin line. This is free space and this is used space. Understand the concept, how data behave, how data live in this whole room. And this is this is this line is called HWM high watermark. High watermark is the last block till where data is written. So my query will go even you deleted the record, still my high watermark is not set. My high watermark still exists here. So when the query will run, query will go and try to search the last block. You deleted the record 90%, but my query is going here, 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 here. 
to find the data. Because of this, your query is still taking 30 seconds. If you truncate the table and then try to search, then maybe your query will be reset, right? And the query start working faster. Are you getting my point? Anybody any doubt in this in this particular scenario? This question understand the scenario? Yes, Gautam, ask your doubt. Uh, so, sir, let's say after deleting, we you know run the commit command. Will it still say the same as the one? Yes, you can do commit command. There is nothing change with the high watermark. Never get confused. Even some people get confused and if I do analyze table table in computer statistics, then my high watermark will reset. No. High watermark not reset. High watermark is associated with your truncate. How to reset we will discuss about. We will discuss about performance tooling in the last sessions. Even in my batch 24, I haven't teach it yet. Maybe tomorrow in the class, I will teach them. So see here, here. high watermark, how to reset, we will discuss it later. But understand here the concept of delete and truncate. I am trying to teach you. I'm not giving example. You're not going to exam that I'm learning in some class or school and if the paper is delete and truncate. I'm writing an answer. Somebody give answer. They will get, get get got eight out of 10. Somebody get 10 out of 10. No, against your answer, you are getting salary. You are getting selected. Your life will be set. And what is your focus? You know, when you go for interview, you know what happened out of 10 person who came for interview? Six, you can just think about it. They don't want any job. They just come. They just thought that they will get a job. Six are any very stupid. So don't talk about them. Only four people who actually came with some understanding of the database with the concept. Out of this four, only two people who can give the good answer, they got selected. You know what? One more thing I want to teach you to all of you. When you're working in a company, right? Suppose you are a software engineer. There are seven people working in a software engineer. They all have different, different salary. They are not all, they are not, you are not in government office. You are not on the same pay scale. You are working in a private company and you all are a different, different package. Who give better answer, they crack better package. Very simple. If you give better answer, you will crack better package. So focus how to crack interviews. Okay. So your concept is here. I'm trying to teach you what I'm giving answer. We start with the delete and truncate. Interviewer asks you difference between delete and truncate. This question is so random question. They generally ask you just randomly. And you now here, you can get a ball in your court. When the ball comes in your court, court convert it maximum. You know cricket? When there is no ball is coming, do they, any batsmen really care? They will go catch out or they will give it bold? No, they try their best to make it maximum. Right? Six. This particular question is a free hit for all of you free hit penalty corner when you work in a football or hockey is a penalty corner in a soccer game it's like a penalty corner when it comes to you convert in a goal cricket it comes like a free hit convert into maximum the question is delete and truncate very simple question and you always have to move this question accordingly that yes all answer delete is delete is dml truncate is ddl delete needs rollback commit truncate doesn't need rollback commit delete can be a where condition truncate cannot be where condition that's okay that's okay everybody knows this answer then truncate is faster than delete and second truncate will reset hwm once you set truncate is reset hwm into your last, this will be last answer remember always last answer then it will tell you what is SWM. Then you have to say SWM is high watermark. High watermark is the last block till where data is written. High watermark is the last block. High watermark basically a, a, just a line. They separate the used block with just a line. They separate the used block and free block. So when I run the query, even if you deleted the data, when anytime data is inserted, my high watermark is shifted from here to here to here. But when you delete, it never come back here. It is still when you, it always move forward. Even if you deleted the data, data not exist here, data not exist here, data not exist here. But the high watermark is here. So my query will go and search till the last high, till the last block where it is written. It is called the concept of HWM. Delete command never reset HWM. Delete command is never reset HWM. Remember that. The concept of SWM. Never reset delete. But truncate will always reset. When we truncate, the data I mean, the table is totally empty. My high watermark come here. 
that is called the concept of HWM. Understand the concept of HWM, everybody. Anyone, any doubt in HWM? And this is how you have to answer an interview. This is how you have to answer. Second line, what I told you here, truncate is faster than delete. How truncate is faster than delete? Take an example. Suppose Gautam, I'm giving your name as an example. Okay, don't mind. Because I can see your name first. So I'm giving you an example. I'm giving an answer to all of you that truncate is faster than delete. I'm giving one more option. Truncate is faster than delete. First concept, let me tell you again. HWM, everybody understand it. I hope so, right? High watermark, everyone understand it. When this question comes, you have do, do you understand what is happening here? I am moving this delete and truncate totally into HWM. The same you have to do. Truncate is faster than delete. Take an example. Here is Vishal. Okay. And Gotham came and Gotham stole $100 from my wallet. Gotham stole $100 from my wallet. Now Gotham has two options. Either Gotham go to the market, right? And he eat ice cream, right? Eat pizza, watch movie, buy some clothes, and spend my all hundred dollars. Second option, Gotham will take this money and hide it somewhere. That when Vishal forget it, then I will take that money and rip and use it back. Agree, everyone? There is no other option, right? If he stole my money, either he can go and immediately spend everything, or he will hide my money and see that when we shall forget it then i will use that money hundred dollar to somewhere else suppose we shall got it that okay you took the dollar so what happened i will tell him okay give my money back if suppose gotham spent that money already then what can i do he spent then spent money is gone i can't do anything but suppose no he is not spent the money the data is here somewhere hidden it when i tell him he will revert my money back this is truncate this is delete from where he is returning back <clears throat> because he hide it somewhere roll back can be work here because data is stored somewhere so whenever we are inserting updating or deleting any record data save into the redo log buffer redo log buffer data is stored here so that's why you are making roll back data coming back from here to your main table just like here in the same example because Gotham hide the money somewhere. So I ask him, he give my money back. Okay, take your money back. Because he stole the money, he hide the money somewhere. Same example, data deleted and data stored into the redo log buffer until I haven't fire commit command. Data is here. So when I do roll back, data coming here back to the table again. But in case of truncate, there is no hidden concept. It is data not written into redo log buffer. It will not consume any time to writing and hiding the data as soon as you find the money spend the money truncate is faster because in case of truncate there is no concept of redo log buffer data will go automatically into the table understand the concept of trunk why truncate is faster truncate is faster because there is no concept of redo log buffer suppose i'm trying to writing a command i want to delete 1000 rows 1000 rows i'm deleting so what is happening First database will write this all 1000 records insert into redo log buffer first. And your table is cannot see the data. Once you confirm and you write commit, then data gone from here. If you write rollback, then data reverted back from here to the main table. That is, that's, it will take a lot of time. Are you, think, are you understanding? You are deleting 1000 records, but actually database is inserting 1000 records first into the table. But in case of truncate, there is no redo log buffer. Data, 1000 record deleted, all record deleted into the table. That's it, gone. So truncate is faster than delete. Understand these two concepts of that delete will, truncate will reset HWM and truncate is faster than delete. These two concepts, understand everyone? Any confusion, anybody? I'm waiting, ask your questions. Anybody in doubt? Got it? Understood? Okay. So, the, we, yes, Bhushan, you raise your hand, ask a question. Yeah, Vishal, I just wanted to ask, like, how can we achieve that HWM uh, by partially deleting the table values? No, it doesn't matter. Simple, simple one line 
one line concept delete will never reset hwm so you can't do this okay simple delete will never reset hwm now come to a very good scenario based question that is a question coming in the interview okay understand the scenario based question we are discussing delete and truncate scenario based question i have a table understand this question everyone i have a table this interview question this question ask everywhere almost i think so nowadays this question is very popular you can find this question asked in amazon facebook meta uber tcs infosys cognizant everywhere this question is coming that my table contains 10 million records my table contains 10 million records let me write it again here i have a table my table contains 10 million records and i want to delete 5 million records how to do this understand this here let me repeat the question question is i have a table table a that has 10 million record i have to delete 5 million how to do this this question is very popular interviewer want to test your concept here and interviewer want to see do you really do any time do you really know how to do this this is what interviewer asking this question, right? Understand this scenario. 10 million record, 5 million record. Okay, let's see how to answer everyone. How to answer? Do you think so that because out of 10 million record, I have to delete 5 million? So definitely I cannot use truncate. Truncate I cannot use because truncate will truncate the whole table. Truncate, there is no wear condition. Truncate means everything will be truncated in one shot, very quick, quick operation. But here from the 10 million, I have to delete only 5 million. So truncate cannot use. I think everybody is agree. Second, delete. There are only two options. I can delete the data. Either I can do truncate or either I can do delete. That's it. There is no other third way. Can I delete the record? If you start deleting this record, delete from a table, your wear condition that delete 5 million record, you cannot do this. It is forever going and going and going and going and going. It never come back. I don't know how much time it will take. Your database will be stuck here. It will took a lot of time. I don't know. You can, if you have any production environment, so never try in production. In staging or development environment, you can create a table which contains 10 million records and try to delete 5 million. You can see how much time it took. It just keep running and running and running and running and running. Keep running. You know why? Because you are deleting 5 million record, it go and first insert that 5 million record into redo log buffer. First of all, it will take a lot of time to write this 5 million into redo log buffer. And second, you must have so much temporary space that can accommodate 5 into this temporary, temporary space. It will take a lot of time. It is not possible. Do you all? understand till here so that i move forward no the we can't unused for rows unused for the columns we cannot okay understand the concept here everyone what till is here. redo log buffer a redo log buffer is basically a the database concept when you when you understand the database architecture redo, good question actually number very good to asking redo log buffer is basically database architecture concept when you delete anything data go to the log buffering concept in the database architecture there is a concept of redo log buffer data when you're writing any dml command like insert update delete the so data saves somewhere into the memory right that is redo log that's called redo log buffer is a buffer cache memory so whenever you, because when you roll back data roll back from there it internally database store that so that it will revert the bags if you want to roll back for example namrata deleted 10000 but suddenly namrata realized oh my god i did a mistake i want my data back so namrata just go and directly roll back so data come back so from where the data come back that is the memory location that is called redo log buffer into the database memory right where data is stored there so in case of truncate there is nothing memory stored Truncate will be straightforward truncated everything. But in case of delete, insert, and update, means DML command, DML command always go first and log the data into redo log buffer. It's a memory space. So first of all, truncate, I can't do this. I hope you all understand the question. If anybody don't understand the question, please stop me here first. The question is, my table contains 10 million record. I want to delete 5 million. How to do this? Your answer to the interviewer is, sir, we cannot do truncate here because truncate will empty the whole table which we don't want 
Number two, we cannot fire the delete command also. Because if you're deleting 5 million records, it will take a lot of time and definitely hung the database. It will stuck and I don't know when it come back. I don't know when it come back. It will took a lot of time. Maybe it will stuck, hung because I, I don't have so much redo log buffer possible. Maybe don't have temporary space. And if it is has, suppose it has temporary space, it still took a lot of time to write these 5 million records. So we can't do this. Then what to do? How to read? Step number one. Follow this is the answer. Everybody doing the same thing in a real time project. Because why this answer is a different scenario based question? Because this is the real time scenario comes in everybody in a real time scenario projects. And this is how interviewer will judge you that you ever did, did this or not. Step number one I will create a table. See this here. Create table, suppose a underscore temp. I have this table, a table. A table A contains 10 million call. I will create table A temp as select star from A, where my condition that 5 million. The 5 million record I want to delete and the 5 million record I want to save. So the record I want to save only for those record I create another table. Create table table name add select star from table where create that record it means what i want to save that record save here create is a ddl command that is faster and quick run quickly step number two now i save the data now i save the data now i have required record which record i required that record already here temp table now number two truncate table a truncate is quick now i don't care anything i truncate my table a table a is truncated done finish now my table is empty now next step if i want i can move the data from here to here or i can rename this a underscore temp table to a table let me repeat it again i have a table that contains 10 million record i want to delete 5 million how to do this your answer will be sir i cannot do truncate here because truncate will empty the whole table which i don't want i cannot do delete here because deleting 5 million is a huge volume of data can take a lot of time and hung my database definitely for sure. I don't know which when to come back. So I can't do delete. So I will follow number three. I will create a temporary table. Create table A temp. Add select star from A. From the same table, I will create another table and with where condition, the record which I want to save. Suppose I want to save some 5 million record, 2 million record, 3 million record. As much record I want to save, I create a temporary table for it. And then now I have all the records saved here. A underscore temp table contains all the record which I want in my database, which I want. Now, next step, I will go and truncate my table, main table. So I, I, now I don't care. Delete everything because my my the required record i already save here now either i can go and insert record from temp table to the main because now my now my main table is empty empty means that high watermark is now moving here now my high watermark is moving here i can go and insert all the record here all the record from temp table insert record from here to here now or second option i can drop my main table and rename this temp table to main table. But renaming, renaming the main renaming the temp table to main table is not a good criteria because when you're dropping the table, so all the procedures, functions which are using that table, they all become uncompiled. So don't follow that process. Always try to insert the record from temp table to the main table. That is the view used in the real time. Everyone using in this in the real time scenario. Got it? Understand this? Anybody, any confusion till here? Yes, Naveen, ask your question. So we we are, we are moving uh, five 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 million records from uh, ten thousand, uh, right? So how database mm -hmm. will know which record should be keep, which record should be uh, ignore? Database don't know. You know that. How database will know? Suppose here, see the example. I have, see here. You yeah, understand? I have a table that contains ten million. My scenario is I want to delete see here. I not coming back clear. Let's see here. Not a plus plus. I want to delete 5 million. I said that all the records before 
2015 delete them got it let me understand this scenario yeah yeah understand yeah, scenario we are in data we need to uh, put some conditions yes so you know the scenario that before 2015 all data i want to delete before 2015 you have supposed 5 million records into the table that i you want to delete but after 2015 record you want to save so what you do you do like this create okay. table a underscore temp select star from k where my created date is greater than created date is greater than suppose first january 2016 okay. so all record from 2016 what i want to save that record come here navin agree till here yes 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 right got it now the record i want i want to save that record comes here now i can go and write it here truncate table a now okay, truncate okay. all the record done my table is empty now i can go and insert into a select star from a underscore temp all the data which i saved here i move the data from here to the main table done this is what real time everyone doing the project i have an option here other than truncating the table i can go and drop table a as well and just rename this temporary table rename a underscore temp to a but we should not do this because when you drop the table a so all the other procedures function packages cursor who are using this table they become uncompiled so we have to do an extra work to go and compile them again so that process we are not using any time into the real time scenario you always truncate the table and insert the data into the table from the temporary table got it understand i mean yes yes thanks vishal okay radha krishna ask your question you raise your hands um, hi vishal uh, my question is like uh, uh, when we insert those uh, stored records in the temp table back to the main table will that be mm -hmm. a better option than deleting those 5 million records with that uh, selection criteria will it, this will be faster than that yes the reason is when you create the main when you insert the data at that time when we learn about indexing rather so yeah. i will let you know when we learn about indexing we will at in the real time scenario how the real time project work we will disable the indexes so that it will be very faster and there is a concept called append hint when i discuss this all when you learn about performance tuning all i will let you know there is a concept called append hint a p p e n d append hint will be directly insert the data it is called as a direct path insert it will directly bulk the data dump the data into the table it will very fast concept append hint when we go here we learn about all these things don't worry i just yeah. append hint let's see this here append hint in oracle postgres sql ms sql everywhere there is append hint append hint optimizer to perform a direct path insert which improve the performance of insert directly data insert into the bulk data insert into the data blocks directly blocks. that is the concept we will learn okay so understand this now when this question come into the interview okay yeah. how to answer never say delete and this sometimes interviewer are very smart because people knows this answer nowadays so interviewer can interviewer can tell you i don't want to do this then we will we will learn the concept of bulk delete by using the collections we will learn about it but here till whatever we learn you know the concept how we are going to use it we can create it. this is what we are every day in a real time scenario rather we are using the same concept we are creating a table first right we are creating a table with the required record then we truncate the table then we move the table this is the general scenario using each and every project okay mahalakshmi you raise your, sagar first you ask your question mahalakshmi after that sagar you ask your question first you raise your hands first yeah uh, am i audible first yes 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 please yes. ask okay. your question so in step 3 uh, we uh, uh, inserting again okay in back uh, main table mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. that is again the dml statement correct that's why it would open hint right uh, you no know, real time because, scenario uh, what you did it will take a time no oh, we are uh, inserting do, right? uh, inserting the table when we uh, in a real time work you know what is correct. what is we are doing sagar we are like in the see yeah. alter table a no logging and okay. then we are writing insert append hint by using this direct path insert there is no logging activity perform very minimal logging perform and data inserted that it is much faster we learn about all these things in no logging you know when we learn performance tuning we learn about hint so it is it is it, it is it is taking no it is not taking so much time it is much faster by using no logging so it is no 
inside of video 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 lock it will video it will just log yeah, very minimal information lock it will it will log very minimal information and much faster okay. okay so this is the concept i'm trying see i'm not giving you definition of delete and truncate yeah. for defining delete and truncate i am not here with learning my i'm telling you to all of you i am not a professional trainer i try to teach you what i learned from a real time scenarios real time work and that is actually needed when you go for a any interview when you go for any interview in a real in a real time scenario because they want to judge you do you really work or not interviewer are very smart they know in few minutes that really work or not from there will judge you and that's how you have to answer you have to show your say okay so in india nowadays wedding season going on when you go for wedding i told you everyone right there are lots of stall there lots of stall at least 100 types of food are there if you have capacity you can eat and test all 100 if you don't just go on two stall you are done and keep sitting is up to your capacity in the same at the time of interview is up to your capacity how good you answer how you can influence the interviewer with your answers and you can move the interview exactly how you want mahalakshmi ask your question uh vishal um in temp table we are actually inserting the data which we want instead mm -hmm. that uh why can't we uh, insert the data which we don't want and simply uh okay. truncate the table then, temp yay Okay, you are saying here I can insert the data which I don't want. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I deleted. I inserted the data which I don't want. Then what we can do? Then delete the. I mean, uh, truncate the table, temp table. Truncate the temp. Then why we created the temp table if I have to truncate the temp table? Then what is the reason? What happened with my main table? We don't agree. see your table is table A. Understand it here, Malakshmi. Your this is your mm -hmm. table. This is your table which is used in application. This table contains 10 million record. I want to delete 5 million from this table. This temporary table, if I delete from here, then what do you achieve it? Your table still comes with 10 million record. You have to delete the record from here, not from okay, here. Okay, okay. Uh, got it? Yeah, Understand? Got it, I got it, got it. Okay. Oh, oh, that's what we cannot rename uh, again. Uh, again, we'll face all uh, index packages. Yes, if you try to rename and drop, then what happened? It will renaming means what? The table drop. Again, it's a long process. Drop, yeah. All the all the procedures and functions and cursor we're using that they become uncompiled. You get another task to become compile them again. Got it? Okay. Understand? Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Right. Okay. Focus on concept, everyone. I am teaching the concept. In each and every class, we are learning the concept, right? When we learn SQL, I will tell you tricks. How we, when you see the SQL, it comes in your mind how to solve it. Okay, this is what we are learning. Ram, ask your question before I move forward to the next topic. Uh, yeah, we shall actually same scenario. I think by using partitions also we can achieve. I think. See, see, first of all, tell me, you know what is partitioning? Partitioning means, okay, the people who don't know about partitioning, we will discuss about the partitioning in the very last of our class after performance tuning. But let, because he said partitioning, I'm telling you, partitioning means a logical division run. Partitioning is only advisable if your table contains more than 2 GB of data. It doesn't mean that if your table oh. contains 1000 records, you just create in partitioning. You don't need it. Partitioning okay. is one for very large table. If you go to the Google, and you go to Oracle documentation, MS SQL documentation, SQL Server documentation, Postgre documentation, DB2 documentation. They are specifically mentioned that partitioning is only do if you have a very large table and you can archive the partition, right? But here the okay. question is not about partitioning. Partitioning is the question is about if suppose you you are not working on partitioning. For example, then if your your project is not work, if, if your table doesn't have partition table, then you can go for partition the table again. Then you do this activity? Definitely not. So what activity I just tell you, Ram, 99% of the project okay. are using this same concept everywhere. 99%. Okay. 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 Now okay. come back to the next topic. Now come back to the next topic. Okay. So what we learn until now, we learn what is database. We learn what is table. We learn why the table create. We learn what is index organized. We learn what is heap organized. We learn what is set unused command. We learn high watermark. We learn the concept of why truncate is faster. We learn how to answer. 
that cause we learn virtual columns we learn invisible columns we learn can i say can i uh, add a new column on a particular space that we learn there's so many things we learn about this now let's move now let's move to the keys concept what is keys 90 percent public i met and who are asking me question to one of my groups right so many people asking questions my one of my groups is vishal what is super key what is candidate key what is surrogate key what is unique key what is composite primary key what is primary key they all get confused and i don't know why okay so let's understand a very simple scenario understand the concept again i'm repeating it here again next 30 minutes i'm just talking about keys okay what is key database is pure english key means what key which can open the lock right this is what we all know go to go to your house and ask is, is a very small child in your house who understand what is lock and key ask you where is the key so you understand it the key moves you want to start the car or he wants to open the lock very simple right agree key means who can open the lock key means which is used to uniquely identify the data either you are a primary key super key candidate key surrogate key composite primary key uh, alternate key secondary key i don't care whatever you are if I'm talking about key, if I told you key, it means you are used to uniquely identify the data. One line, always remember everyone. Key means which you used to uniquely identify the data. Key means which you used to uniquely identify the data. And that is called key. Now, every key has their some small, small things like some own characteristics. We learned about that. From that characteristics, we know that why you are super key why you are candidate key why you are primary key why you are composite primary key why you are alternate key and why you are surrogate key from here we know but the base concept is same the key is a key which is used to open the lock it means the key is a key which is used to uniquely identify the data irrespective of what key key means uniquely identify the data uniquely identify means what when i run the query with the where condition it will give me one row that is called uniquely identify. If I write this query here, everyone can see that. If I'm writing the query here, suppose select star from hr.employees. This is my table. Right? I'm writing it here where suppose department underscore ID is equal to 90. I have run this condition. It will give me three records. So department ID is not the key. Because by using department ID, I'm not getting unique record. I'm getting three records. So department ID is not the key. But I'm writing here, employee underscore ID is equal to 100. I'm getting one row. Employee ID is the key. I'm talking about key. I'm not talking about primary or super or candidate or alternate or surrogate. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about key. I'm writing one more condition. And first underscore name is equal to Stephen, I again getting only one row. These two combinations are also a key. I'm writing and salary is equal to 24,000. I'm again getting a key. I'm again getting a one row. It means this is also a key. Till here, understand everyone. Any doubt till here? Please stop me if any doubt here. Key means uniquely identify the data. It means give you one row. This one column also give me one row. These three columns also give me one row. Agree? Till here, agree or not? Yes or no? Tell me somebody. Dhanush, Divya, Digambar, Karthik, Neha, Sagar. Yes, understand it? Venkat, Vamsi. Understand it? Yes, which are. Till here, understand everyone? Okay. Think about the situations. Well, I'm first talk about super key. Super key is the main key. If I take all the columns here, take an example. Suppose all the columns where I'm writing it where employee is equal to 100 and first name is equal to Stephen and last name is equal to King and email is equal to S King and phone number is equal to this and had and all the columns if I wrote and I able to get one row. So the maximum number of columns, maximum number of columns is what? The total columns. Maximum number of columns is what? The total columns in a table. If the maximum number, the maximum number of column combination which can give you one row, that is called super key. Super key. Like column, how many columns here? Think about it. Let me say one, two, three, 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन अलेवन Eleven column combination. If I write combination means where in bloody hundred and first name is got to Stephen and last name is got to King and email is got to this and phone number is got to this and heart is got to this. This eleven column combination. If I wrote the maximum number of column combination which can give me one row that is called super key. But suppose I don't write this department ID. I just writing and employee ID is got to this and first name is got to this and last name is got to this. Why oh, only use this ten column? But I am still getting one row. That is called candidate key. Means I am not using the all column combination, but still less than that. But still I am getting the whole single row. Still I am getting the unique data identification. That is called candidate key. A table contains multiple candidate key. If I use a nine column combination, still I am getting one row. Okay, nine column combination is another candidate key. Eight column combination, I am getting another single row. Another candidate key. Four column combination. I am still getting a single row. It's also called a candidate key. Let's see this here. Same column for writing here. For example, where first name is equal to Stephen, and employee ID is equal to, for example, and last name is equal, first name is equal to Stephen. Suppose I am writing here. I am getting two records. This is not the candidate key. This is not the candidate key. Because I'm getting two records. Key means it will give you one row. No con con confusion. It will give me one row. Five column combination. I'm getting one row. Candidate key. But suppose if I use four column combination, I'm getting one row. But when I use three column combination, I start getting two rows. Think about the scenario. Eleven column combination. Maximum column combination. I'm getting one row. Super key. Super key is the maximum column combination. I am able to get the unique data. Super key. Less than super, less than maximum number of combination means suppose my table contains eleven columns, but I am using only ten columns in my where condition. Still getting one row candidate key. Nine column candidate key. Eight column candidate key. Seven columns candidate key. Six column candidate key. Till four columns combination I am using. I am getting one row candidate key. But when I use three column combination, I may start getting two rows. Means my uniqueness is gone. So minimum candidate key is primary key. The minimum of candidate key, minimum column combination which can give me one row that is called primary key. Understand it here? Let me repeat it again with these three things and ask me your doubt, please. I am talking about super candidate and primary. Super key, the maximum number of column combination, which can give you key means key, which used to uniquely identify the data. That is called key. Key means key, which used to uniquely identify the data. Super key, the maximum number of combination, which can give you one row. Super key. If I'm not using maximum number of combination, use less than that, but still getting one row. Candidate key. Suppose my table contains eleven rows here. And I'm using ten row, ten columns, and I'm getting one row. This ten column combination is called one candidate key. If I'm using only nine columns, but I'm still getting one row, this nine column combination is called another candidate key. Suppose I'm using six columns combination, I'm still getting one row. That six column combination is called candidate key. But I'm using suppose five columns, but I'm start getting two rows. It means my uniqueness is gone. Means minimum candidate key means six columns. If using six column, then I'm getting one row. So minimum number of candidate key is called primary key. Got it? Tell here. Understand? Tell here, everyone. So primary keys uniquely identify the data. Why? What I explain with the query, Vishal? Simple here. The query here is the query. Means what? I don't understand it here. Let I. It's okay. Suppose this is the column. I'm writing it here where employee ID is equal to. Hundred. Suppose the table select star from HR dot locations HR dot department. Any column, see small easy columns. Yeah, HR dot departments. I don't know why departments. I'm writing it here where department name is equal to administration. One column. I am getting one row. In this situation, I have just only one column. So this also become that also be a key. 
that also be a key it can be primary key it can be super key a super key means all the column combination i'm writing department name and department id is equal to 10 and manager id is equal to 200 and location id is equal to 1700 this maximum number of these four columns are called these four column combinations once again sagar four column combinations are called because my table contains four columns so these four column combination in a query what i wrote this is called candidate key candidate key means department id department name department id manager id location id these four column combination which can give me one row the maximum this four is the maximum four is maximum so this is called super key if other than these four columns if i use only three columns in my query if i use only three columns suppose i don't use this location id column if i only use these three columns i am still getting one row right please move who is not speaking please move. i don't know why this really i don't like it if you don't have time then no then no need to join the session right please but if you join so please mute because there are so many people other people are joined so respect their times if i'm using three column one second i'm coming to sagar uh, let me explain him first Divya first if i'm using three column combination he's still getting the one row this three column combination is called candidate key if i'm using two columns only still getting one row this two column combination is also called another candidate key but if i use only one column and i get two rows it means my uniqueness is gone so minimum of two columns if i am using then i am getting one row minimum candidate key is equal to minimum of candidate key is actually called primary key which used to uniquely identify the data got it Dibya? okay yes you can ask your question hasina ask your question you raise your hands hasina ask your question hello yeah good evening yes tell yes tell me yeah what is exactly the use of a super key when we were hard coding i mean when we were passing all the data in the where column i mean in which okay. scenario particularly we use the super key key is a concept you know we use that's why that's come in that's why it comes like this this is a whole subset we can come inside okay. this candidate inside this primary these are the concepts we are not creating like create super key create candidate key we are not creating we are only creating primary key foreign key and unique key that's it other than that we are nothing create anything the upper version of primary key is called candidate key and super key these are concepts an interviewer want to test your concept of database that you understand how exactly this work let's see the next example here just give me one so, second the next Sagar, you have any question can we say that a candidate key is oh, sorry primary key is always a candidate key right yes primary key is always a candidate key and yes. uh, uh, if a table has only two or three columns so there, mm -hmm. there can be a possibility that a super key is same as candidate key. Exactly. Super key is the, what I told you here, super key is the big, big circle here. Super set. Candidate key and primary key is subset of it. Super key means all, every key is a key which used to uniquely identify the data. Simple line combination. If I use all the columns, my table does not have anything, all the columns I'm using, and I give one row that is called super key. It's a concept. I'm getting a data. Less columns I'm using, that is called candidate key. And a minimum of candidate is called primary key. But suppose there is a combination called surrogate key. What is surrogate key? Okay. How many of you know about surrogacy? Do you know surrogacy is a term? Everybody knows about it, right? I hope everybody knows. You will learn Brad Pitt and Angela and Jolie, you know, Sarukh Khan and Gauri Khan, right? They got a kid. And everybody knows. Everybody know the term surrogacy. What is surrogacy means? Yeah. Surrogacy means listen, please, please mute. Listen what I'm trying to make an example and try to understand the concept. When this question comes in an interview, please explain in the same way. If you want to make a good impact, don't give definition. What is surrogate key is written on Google. Interviewer don't want to ask you what is surrogate key. You are not getting marks. You are getting salary here. 
you have to prove your concept not theoretical answers interviewer are not stupid let me repeat you all if you think that you can make them stupid you cannot what is surrogate key we all know surrogacy what is surrogacy means surrogacy means that suppose a husband and wife is not able to make a child because of some complications right so they can opt an option of surrogacy what does surrogacy means surrogacy means that maybe we are not able to make a child but we take somebody we take from somewhere like from surrogacy options right and we can adopt that child and give my name or we can adopt it forget about surrogacy just because surrogate keys come from surrogacy world that's why i'm giving this option surrogacy we can took it from here it not contains dna of we both suppose me and my wife we both decided to go for surrogacy options the child who come in my house that may not contains the dna of we both but now he is my child now i can tell them you are abcd as well now you are who is taking my this what i can say uh, uh, my family you can go the voice is you are not audible your voice is breaking the voice is not the voice is breaking the voice is breaking you are not audible just give me a second okay is it good now all good i think so all good all good please confirm anyone all good yes, yes okay yes. let's come let's yes. come back to yes, the yes. concept let's come back to the concept of surrogate key i am coming to the concept of surrogate key everyone surrogate key let's come back and understand the concept of surrogate key surrogate key means surrogate key comes with the concept of the word surrogacy when when a table does not have any column when a table does not have any column that will use to uniquely identify the data when a table does not have any column my suppose my table contain duplicate data i don't have a single column which can able to uniquely identify the data when i don't have it then i will populate a column how how can i can populate a column i can populate a column artificially just like in surrogacy we get a child artificially we can decide right you know if you go for surrogacy option if you don't know let me tell you because many of i know many of my personal my friends decide the gender that do you want a boy or a girl i can decide it do i want do i want that uh, that boy or girl has a curly hairs or a straight hair i want the blue eyes or green eyes what i want i can decide it by using surrogacy option the same in case of surrogate key i can decide that you are here to represent me my table is uniquely identify the data i will decide what is your starting number i will decide how you are improving i will decide how you are generating artificially generated for example suppose i go to hospital okay as a patient you all go to the many all we all went sometimes in a hospital like in us i'm giving an example that we have ssn number ssn number is a unique identification of me like in india we are using aadhar card number or pan number or suppose passport number which is uniquely identify of you but in a, when you go to a hospital right to register do you given your ssn number and hospital will say okay ssn number 12345678 never because it's a unique added your your identity that is a primary key but but what hospital will do hospital will assign a number patient number 1234 support your id is hospital give a an id hospital tell that you are pat123 pat123 means vishal jaiswal when hospital write pat123 it will display every detail of vishal because pat123 will be generated artificially by the hospital to uniquely identify the records of vishal jaiswal at 123 is only only and only exist in the hospital when i come out of the hospital there is nothing like pat 123 nobody knows what is pat 13 so surrogate key is used 
when I don't have primary key, when I don't have anything to uniquely identify, means I don't go on hospital to give my assistant number or my Aadhaar card number, and they can write a, a customer with the Aadhaar card of 12 digit, or a customer with the PAN card of 10 digit, or a customer with the SN of number, number of 9 digit. We don't want it, and nobody using it, because it will store your identity. So many frauds can be possible. So what hospitals will do? They will generate a present ID for all of you. And that present ID will be used to uniquely identify your to you. That is called the concept of surrogate key. So surrogate key comes from the picture when my table does not have anything. And I want to generate some column artifice. If you know the people who knows about sequence in Oracle. Sequence in Microsoft SQL Server, MS SQL or MySQL, we are using auto-generated numbers. Which auto generated the primary key 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, ID numbers. These are what? These are surrogate key. My table does not have anything which used to uniquely identify the data. So we can use the concept of surrogate key. Understand the concept? What is super key? What is what is surrogate key? What is primary key? You got it? Anybody still have any doubt on surrogate key? Now there is a question comes in the interview. This question asks in Facebook. What's the question I'm going to discuss to all of you? When you give this answer, as I told you, interviewer are very smart. Right? Interviewer tell you, okay. As you know, the table contains super key. Means if I use all the column combination, I am I am possibly I'm able to get the unique record. Suppose I have a member table, okay, and my member table does not have anything member ID, but I can. But when I use first name, last name, and date of birth right then if i use my condition where first name is equal to this and last name is equal to this and date of birth is equal to this if i use these three column combination i am able to get a unique data three column combination the minimum of candidate key this is the minimum of candidate key minimum of candidate key is the primary key so why not i create this as a primary key why i am creating another id column which i populated through sequence do you ever feel so in your project? So many people are working in a real-time scenario. I'm considering out of you, 90% public who are using in, in your project, you can see your ID column is populated through sequence. Have you ever think about why? Why they are used sequence? Why not they can use first name, last name, date of birth combination, three and four table combination, and try to try to uh, get the data, unique data. Why I'm using ID, which is which which this ID is. Nothing for this table, nothing related to first name Vishal, Jaiswal, and date of birth. Nothing for this person. This ID generated artificially, artificially, either by auto generated or by using sequence. Do you ever think about why? Are you getting my question or not? First, let me know. If you don't get the question, then let me know. I will try to repeat the question, maybe in some other word. Digambar, you don't understand the question? No, yes. You do not understand the question? Digambar, tell me yes or no, man, that I'm waiting for you. Yes, no, no, no. Everybody is waiting. Yes. Understand or don't understand? I don't understand. Okay, don't understand. Okay, so tell me very, don't, don't hesitate, ask the questions. That's why we are here. Let me repeat the question again. Okay. The question is, I have a table. My table contains so many columns. Right? Yes. If I'm using my condition, my table, where first name is equal to Vishal and last name is equal to Jaswal and date of birth is equal to date of birth. So I'm getting unique data. By using these three column combination, one, two, three column combination, I'm getting unique data. Yes, yes. But still, in my table, I am not creating this as a primary key. More than one column, which where when they are used, that is called composite primary composite key. key. When, when more than one column is used, that is called composite primary key. So why not I create composite primary key? Rather than that, I will create an ID column, populate this value through sequence, and use this as a primary key. Why I am doing this? Got the question? Yes, yes, yes. Remember? Understand. Yes, yes. Can I understand. understand the question? This is the this question is actually asked in Meta. 
and after this question ask everywhere this question can be considered for more than six year experienced person right why it, it is happening so understand it the people who don't know about it the concept of indexing when we discuss index i let you know this particular question because i am discussing about composite primary key and primary key and surrogate key so i am giving the answer here that is helpful for six year more than six year experience what is happening is here is when you create composite primary key database will create an index on top of that the people who knows about don't know the people more than this question for more than six year experience the database created index on that and index database has to maintain that index database has to maintain that index so if first of all it will take a lot of space of index creation and database has to manage that index if any data inserted or updated or deleted database has to maintain the index and suppose any data can be null because primary key not allowed null so we cannot insert that data into the table so to do overcome all these situations we are creating sequence and populate this id column using sequence and use the concept of surrogate yes number to ask your question uh, is there Namata, you raise hands yeah is there any difference between primary key and composite primary key no okay. if one column is if there is if there is only one column suppose id column alone that's called primary key if more than one column coming here to create a composite to create a primary key it means more than one column which used to uniquely identify the data i will call you a composite primary key that's it it's just a game of word if a table contains only one column that used to uniquely identify the data that is called the primary key if more than one column is there that is called composite primary key that's it got it Namrata? yeah got it yes, yes radha krishna ask your question uh, sir, Vishal, I missed one of your points when you are explaining about the composite primary key. What was that null thing that you mentioned? Can you just repeat that statement? Null thing. Okay, I, I will discuss about that uh, statement tomorrow in detail when we discuss about primary key and unique key, right? Okay. But the question is, prime, the concept of primary key is primary key not allow null. We discuss yeah. about tomorrow more detail. We discuss about tomorrow that a table contains only one primary key. A table contains multiple candidate keys but primary key only one. So we'll discuss tomorrow why only one? Why not we create two primary key? What is the reason? If a table contains two unique key, if a table contains three unique key, if a table contains five candidate key, but why there is only one primary key that I will discuss tomorrow. So in this situation, I'm telling you primary key not allow null. That is the concept of primary key. So when we create composite key here, composite piece more than one column, column one, column two column three if more than one column it means i am calling you are a composite primary key because you are more than one column so when you become a primary key you have to follow one rule none of them can be null none of them can be null right but that's why and suppose user is entering first name last name date of birth user can make any mistake they try to insert null and the data is fail so to avoid or overcome all this situation we better to create a surrogate key which can automatically artificially populated and because it is artificially so we can control it and we know that it will never come null because we populate just like surrogate key we control that we know that is a boy or a girl we can decide the gender we can decide their hairs we can decide their eyes color Right? we can decide it here same in surrogate key we can decide that from where you start from where you end what is your increment factor how the data is coming here everything we can decide because this is artificially generated got it understand yes mahalakshmi ask your question uh yes Jishwan. and the last uh, concept we discussed uh you said like minimum combination is primary key and the maximum is super key uh then mm -hmm. now when you say like it's a combination of uh like one or more keys for primary key you are saying composite key and it doesn't mean a candidate key then what is candidate key the minimum of candidate key is called a primary key don't get confused let me repeat to all of you again i know that at least 90 percent public get confused of this keys concept key 
which can open the lock key which is used to uniquely identify the data any key which is used to uniquely identify the data super key uniquely identify the data candidate key uniquely identify the data primary key uniquely identify the data composite primary key uniquely identify the data surrogate key uniquely identify the data unique key uniquely identify the data alternate key uniquely identify the data they all for uniquely identify the data that's it super key the maximum number of column combination super key suppose my table contains 10 columns i'm using all 10 columns in my where condition and i get to one row super key but if i'm not using 10 columns if i use only nine columns and i get one row candidate key eight, eight columns candidate key seven column candidate key six columns candidate key five columns and still getting one row candidate key four columns still getting one row candidate key three column i'm getting two row no this is not candidate key means minimum if i use four columns then i getting one row so this minimum four column combination is called primary key so because this is four columns that's why it is called composite primary key because more than one column is here got it malakshmi uh, yes sir uh, i got it uh, okay. okay devasri ask your question so when in general conditions we use super key okay let me repeat it again i told i think i told you you haven't listened it we are not creating create super key we are not creating create candidate key we are only creating primary key unique key no uh, i understood that but uh, do we generally use okay. super key super super key is a concept we are using if we okay suppose, what is the concept of super key super key is a concept which is saying that i if I, if i don't have anything but still i use all the column combination and i get a one row it means this is called a super key super okay. key is a concept okay, okay. Okay, which okay. can decide okay. the how the data reside in your table okay got it yes gautam ask a question uh, yes yeah, so sir the first topic you taught us was virtual column that we can create so let's mm -hmm. say we take a you know particular thing from three columns created a virtual mm -hmm. column and then make it our primary key can we do that virtual yeah. columns cannot be made as a primary key no 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 okay remember one thing right remember what we can do why we are using primary key we can discuss tomorrow the very good examples of primary key unique key alternate key again tomorrow tomorrow session is all about the keys and very good there are so many questions coming in interview that like tomorrow suppose today we discuss about so many scenarios questions like a table contains 10 million rows how to read 5 million my take where query contains uh, 1 million record it will take 30 seconds i deleted 90 percent it's still taking 30 seconds so in the same way we are discussing every day so many scenario based questions in the session right so thank you i will send the notes to all of you for today's session what i discuss let's meet tomorrow same time we can move forward okay thank you thank you bye bye Yes, Ankit, ask a question. Uh, just a small thing, like can we say that composite primary key and the candidate key are inter, I mean, kind of the same, like? No. Why? Composite primary key, what I told you, Ankit, the latest, the minimum of candidate key, your candidate key contains 10 times. Suppose your table contains 11 columns, so 10 column combination is one candidate key, 9 column combination is another candidate key, 8 column combination is another candidate key, 7 column con combination is another candidate key. There are so many candidate key, but they are not composite primary key. Composite primary key is what? The minimum of candidate key. If I use only 4 columns and then I am getting 1 row, but when I use 3 columns, then I am getting 2 row. It means I'm not getting unique data by using three column combination, but the minimum of four column combination, I'm getting unique data. So this four column combination is called the minimum candidate key, and that is called primary key. But because that is more than one column, that's why this primary key called as a composite primary key. Got it, Anikit? Okay, yeah, yeah, got it, yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, Prudvi, ask your question. Okay, no question. Okay, thanks. So let's meet tomorrow, same times. I will send the notes. If anybody don't receive it, send an email. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. 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 Th